one, we will be featuring what everything you need for a setup. And these materials will not change from painting to painting. You are going to need all of these every time. Welcome to my easel. Now, mine is a pretty adjustable one, and it's also breaks down and can be transportable. So that's why I chose this one. It fits really well in my tiny space, but I spent a nice amount of money on this. You definitely don't have to. Feel free to get an inexpensive easel, get one of those little A-frame tabletop easels, or even just a nail in the wall and a canvas hung on that will work just fine. As for my palette, I literally use a big, huge glass slab I found on the side of the road. I find glass works really well. You can scrape on it, it'll last for years. Mine has a white piece of paper behind it and it works wonderfully. You can also go for a handheld palette that you can get at the art store. These work great. Mine happens to be clear, but white ones or wooden ones work well too. It just depends on if you'd rather hold it or have it sitting next to you. And then to really work through and mix your best colors, you're going to need a palette knife. Trust me, you do not want to just mix your paints with a paintbrush for oil paints. It'll get all gummed up. It will ruin your brushes. You will not get them thoroughly mixed. You absolutely need a palette knife. Now I have tried all three of these sizes. I don't find any difference. I do happen to like the black ones that have the elevated handles a bit more, but any of them are going to work just fine. Now let's talk painting surfaces. There are a variety of things you can use. Oil on linen, you can use oil on canvas, you can use oil on wood, you can use oil on board, you can even use oil on some certain thick papers. If you're starting out though, I would say don't spend a lot of money on these fancy materials that are awesome, but inevitably you'll get to that later. Get you a great canvas pad. These are amazing. They're literally um, primed strips of canvas that come in a little pad like that. If you look really closely, you can see it's got that beautiful tooth just like any other canvas, except for you don't have to get the whole frame. They cost probably about 10% as much, and you can feel free about experimenting and messing them up. However, if one does turn out really well, then you can take that painting and you can frame it in a frame just as if it was a drawing. I love these canvas pads. Now you're going to want some paper towels, but I mostly use rags just because I like to be able to use the material over and over again before getting rid of it. And you're also going to need jars to hold the rags that you're currently using as well as all of your waste rags. I'll get to that in a few minutes. Stick around to the end of the video. I find that old cut up t-shirts make the best rags because they don't tend to leave a lot of lint on your brush and they can literally be used for months and months and months at a time. I just wanted to touch briefly on varnishing. As a beginning oil painter, I do not think that you need it. I probably didn't start varnishing my oil paintings for about six to eight years after I started, and I've never had a problem with the earlier ones so far. Alrighty, now materials. These you're gonna need every time, of course, but they are going to change according to what you are producing. Now, I don't wanna overwhelm you with paint. But this is definitely where the large majority of your money is going to go when you're starting out painting. However, the good news is that these tubes, even though they're quite small, last a remarkably long amount of time. Especially if you don't do super thick applications of paint. I am not lying you. Some of these paint tubes I have literally had since I was an undergraduate student over a decade ago. I'm definitely going to want to start off with a titanium white because that avoids getting yellow and I recommend a Payne's Gray instead of black. Payne's Gray can act in place of black. You almost can't tell the difference if you don't mix anything with it, but if you do decide to go a little lighter or use it to darken other shadows and shapes, then you're going to get a much richer, much more realistic, beautiful color. You're going to want to get into your browns. I recommend a burnt sienna and a raw umber. Those are going to give you a really nice spectrum of the warmest, lightest browns and the very darkest, harshest, coldest browns. And then, of course, a yellow ochre is a great one to have in there, too. That's sort of the cross between brown and yellow, and you wind up using it in so many different areas it's time for good old-fashioned red yellow and blue I think it's important to have really nice bright solid middle of the road tones for these important colors so I've got a yellow cadmium I've got another red cadmium and then I like a cobalt blue 
It's also a great idea to have a cerulean as adding white to your cobalt will only make it more of a pastel blue instead of give you the brightness you might crave. And of course an iron oxide green because I use so much of this in all of my skin tones. It's the best. Now I really don't want you to feel overwhelmed with all of these paints. But honestly, I think it's so much easier to start off with a nice variety because that way you can jump right to what you need. I don't like to spend a ton of my time mixing colors. I like to spend a lot more time just painting. So of course you're going to want to mix your own individual hues for each work within these, but having all of these at your disposal just makes it so much easier for your brain to find exactly what it needs when it needs it medium goes you definitely want to have it at your disposal because you want to be able to control how thick or how fluid your oil paint is how much you use is going to totally depend on your own preferences the style you're going for and the specific type of paint that's coming out of the tube as far as brushes go I think it's great to have a nice variety you definitely are going to want some smaller fine point ones for doing detail and I find myself using the flathead brushes the most. Having some round brushes is pretty essential too, and having one or two angled brushes can come in great for tight corners. Definitely make sure you have a few larger brushes too, because the worst thing you can do is try to fill a huge surface area with a tiny brush. You'll go crazy. And after you've used them for a while, make sure you save your old frayed brushes, because they could be great for blending. Now you definitely do not need this many brushes just to start out. I highly recommend you think about what exactly it is you want to paint, go to the art store, and find some brushes that you think are going to be around the right size. Hold them in your hand, see what happens, see what you're drawn to. I think picking out brushes is one of the most fun things you can go look for in the art store. Just make sure you get some nice sable brushes. It can be imitation or real, but they should be soft but not too soft. You want them to be pliable, but you also want them to hold paint. You definitely do not want to make the mistake of getting watercolor brushes or anything that's going to be too flip floppy when you try to express the stiffer paint onto the canvas. And now we make sure we clean up everything properly. You're going to need a jar that's dedicated to terpenoid and having a little spring in the middle for you to rub your brush on makes life so much easier for you. Then you're going to need some soap and a glove. Now you can use fancy art store soap, but you really don't need to. It's quite expensive and honestly just a regular bar of soap with little to no perfume in it works just fine. I highly recommend you use gloves when washing your brushes because it is some seriously toxic stuff in a lot of these paints. Alrighty, now let's talk turps. And by turps I mean turpentine, turpenoid, odorless turpenoid, um, mineral spirits, any of that kind of thing kind of all fun, falls under the category of turps. Um, uh, and uh, I know some people use walnut oil to clean their brushes or even I think there's some kind of like Murphy's oil soap or something like that. That all works fine, but I think that's a different ball game like for painting and all that and I actually have not gotten into the walnut oil yet. So anyway, this is what I use, older odorless terpenoids. Um, but I want to show you guys something because I bought this full at the art store for, I don't know, $16 or something like this. And then I went to my locally owned hardware store and got this for like, I think it was 18 or 19. So um, yeah, there's a, a small price difference between the two of these, which I have found that a lot of times if you get stuff from art stores, specifically or fine artists, you can sometimes find the same exact thing through other avenues at a much better price just because it's not marketed to find artists. So anyways, now I have this big guy that I keep outside because it's kind of unwieldy. I don't really, it's not a great pour. I don't really like to deal with it very much. So I just, every once in a while I fill this up and this is what I keep inside. And uh, yeah, this stays outside, which is why it's got a little bit of weathering going on. But um, anyways, yeah, I personally don't wind up ever throwing this stuff away because if you just keep using it, you can like clean your little jar and like scrape it out and re-clean. Like I'll go into that. Um, don't think that's my video but I do have a video all about like cleaning your brushes and stuff but uh yeah if you ever do need to throw this stuff away you gotta do it the right way I don't think you could put it down the drain or whatever personally I've never needed to but um yeah if you're if you're careful you don't need to throw it away but because that stuff is kind of dangerous that is why we put our rags in jars fireproof jars with lids when we're done with them or during the time that we're using them I have two jars oh lovely pickle jar yes this is a uh, this is um 
all like my refuse and then this is like what I'm currently using and the reason is is because um, different chemicals and stuff like that in oil paints as well as in the terpenoids can spontaneously combust now I think it mostly has to do with things that are left in a pile in a crumple where chemical reactions can form some sort of heat and if it gets too hot with the chemical reactions then you know like the rags the oily rags can burst in flames I think that's what happens I don't know I'm definitely no expert um, so you want to be careful holding on to that stuff but yeah as long as you do everything in a jar and then dispose of it properly and honestly if you're just really like very careful you don't have to do it very often I have literally been working on this jar now for three years since I moved to Hawaii like I don't throw away a lot of stuff I tend to use the hell out of everything I do rags can last for years and I mostly do rags you know so like there's still room I can still pound this down and you know every once in a while you just gotta find your local like recycling place that can take care of it and properly dispose of those um, because that's quite important you really don't want to just throw this garbage like in the uh, you know in, in your sink and regular waste and stuff like that but just little bits just while you're washing your brushes is not too bad because it's diluted but anyways you want to make sure and um, honestly you really want to get the odorless because terpenoids that's going to be a few dollars cheaper if you go to the hardware store you might just get the oh I'll be fine that shit is really bad for you excuse me it is really bad for you like it is and the, those fumes like they can make you sick and you have to have like really good ventilation if you use that so you really want to go for the odorless either terpenoids or um, mineral spirits bye bye guys thanks for being here today hope you learned a lot if you do hit that subscribe button